Uh, as a man who's, whose life has been intimately bound up with this uh, movement, Lord McFall, what did you feel when you heard today? Well, I feel great personal disappointment at the situation that the co-op movement has found itself in, Jeremy, as a member of the co-op. But secondly, as chairman of the Treasury Committee during the time of the financial crisis, I'm absolutely gobsmacked that these revelations have come out. Because if you look at the record of the hearings that we undertook during the crisis, we were very clear with the FSA that, first of all, people had to have qualifications if they were going to be chairman or chief executives of banks. It came up with Northern Rock that neither of the occupants there had those qualifications, so they had to have them. And the second issue that came up was the fit and proper person regime at the FSA. Both Lord Turner, the chairman at the time, and Hector Sands, the chief executive, acknowledged very publicly that it was nothing more than a mere box ticking exercise and they had to change that to ensure that there was technical competence and integrity yeah. in those who were going to be appointed. So nothing has happened since then. But the then. appointment was made by this movement of which you're such a proud representative. It wasn't made by the FSA. You can question whether they should have said, is this bloke appropriate? But the, the appointment was made by your movement. Yeah. Listen, there is no way out of that. You know, that was a serious, serious error on the behalf of the co-op party. And what the co-op needs to do now is to be very open and transparent about how we arrived here and how we're going to take it forward. But the second issue, Jeremy, is if anyone is going to be a chairman or indeed a non-executive director of a financial institution, then they have to be passed by a test by the Financial Services Authority. And that was obviously a paper exercise, nothing else. So the co-op have got a serious responsibility here, but so has the regulator, and indeed so has the government, when you consider that Co-op were in for 600 and odd branches of Lloyds, and that process went on for two years. Were you surprised that a man like this could have been made boss of your bank? Well, I'm surprised, particularly in the hearing or in the evidence that came out today regarding Bradford, you know, and I would like to know who knew that, and did Bradford communicate that to the Co-op group? And uh, in terms of being a chairman of a bank, then one has to have pers not just persuasive powers, but also has to be cool and rational and understanding about the business. And it's obvious that Paul Flowers, from what you've heard in that uh, little episode there, uh, had none of these qualities. But doesn't it also question the judgment of, you, of your party leader, Ed Miliband, in appointing him to this influential advisory committee when he's such a dodgy bloke? Well, who knew he was dodgy? But let me tell you, Jeremy, both as chairman of the Treasury Committee and as a member of the Parliamentary Banking Standards Commission, sadly, in terms of culture and ethics in the banking set up, nothing surprises me very much now. We were asked by the government to look at culture and standards. We found culture which was a rotten culture and we found standards which were abysmally low. So we're right at the foothills in terms of rebuilding the trust and the culture and ethics in banking and financial services. And this again, sadly, in the co-op of all areas, this has proved the case today again.